Good morning, guys. It is your girl T. Let me see if it's recording. From God Will Deliver Ministries. How are we this morning? This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Um, guys, let's open up in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you forgive our sins, our trespasses, and our shortcomings. God, we ask that you increase our knowledge in the things of you, God, the things that you want for our lives and the way that we should go. God, we ask... Um, to keep our minds that we will lean not to our own understanding, God, but in all our ways, we will acknowledge you so you can direct our path. God, have your way on today. God, we thank you for this word. Uh, um, allow the hearer to, um, to take it in, God, that we may be set free, saved, and delivered, God, that we may serve you with our whole heart. God, we thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So guys, I'm coming in two parts, right? So, I have this thing about um, talking about, you know, giving um, or whatever, but like the Lord dealt with me with it in a different way. And then I'm going to go into the title of uh, what this live is about, which is some of the demonic spirits that a narcissist deal with that... Um, when we come into contact or when we come, when we fornicate with it, should I say, when we come into covenant with it, um, it is bestowed on us. So we're going to talk about that. So the Lord has been dealing with me with giving, right? And he has said to me that a lot of people on the live have a problem with giving so and see so and seeds and let me just explain that so and seeds is not only monetary um the lord was dealing with me with um some of you guys live neck have neighbors and you walk outside and you don't even speak you don't even say hi you don't even say good morning um not realizing you could be saving somebody life and then the holy spirit gave me this analogy i as being a counselor right i know let me just explain this i remember when i used to work um when i was one of the coordinators at the salvation army right um i was in my office and the lady a, a young lady had came and we had funding for um back rent so she came, filled out the application. I processed her application. So when she left out, the Holy Spirit told me, go give her a hug. I said, go give her a hug. Gosh, you gonna think I'm crazy. I don't know her. So this is just me in my mind. This is something me and the Holy Spirit go through. So he said it again. So I said, okay, so she hadn't, she was on her way out the door and I was like, excuse me. And she came back and I said, is it okay if I give you a hug? And I gave her a hug and she just started weeping and she stepped back and said to me, you don't know what this hug meant to me because I was getting ready to go home and commit suicide. And I asked God to give me a sign of his love. And you not knowing that just basically gave me a hug. This is what the lady said to me, right? So a lot of times we um say we are believers of Christ or just moral or ethically anyway, right? And we do not... um have that light of Christ on us. Um, I tell mean people all the time, I'm glad I met Christ before I met you because you say you are a believer, but there is nothing in you um, that I see that is of Christ. You complain all the time. You, you, you just mean you're not approachable. You know what I'm saying? And, and, a smile is 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 a gift is giving um some people have um the spirit of giving monetary let me tell you something there is a principle of god right and we always see how non-believers and all of this um are 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 just seem like they're being so blessed there is a principle of god that is for the world but then you got some things that is that some gifts and some you know um 
God's word that is just for his people. But then the principle of God is giving. Um, and, and, and it's a spirit of giving. And when you give, God gives back to you in abundance. It, it, the scripture, you can't beat God's giving. You know what I'm saying? Like your, your cup overflow, the flow, the more you pour out, the more God will pour into you. Some of you guys see people that is hungry and, and you won't even offer them nothing. But let me just say this, pray and ask God where you should give and what you should give. And God gave me a couple of scriptures to give to you. Thank you to, let me just take this. Thank you to everybody who has shared, who has sold into this ministry by sharing, um, by monetary gifts. Thank you so much. Um, guys, I really appreciate it. It is not, um, it is just so appreciated. May God give unto your health, your mental health, your finances, anything that you need, guys. So listen to this. So the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. You know, the good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over a minute, given to your bosom. Luke 6, 38. A lot of times people are like this. And how can God put something in your hand if you're, if you're like this? And I'm speaking um, as, as spiritually, you know what I'm saying? Um, you, you have to be like this, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you heard that saying, and it's a cliche is not a Bible verse, a close, a closed mouth don't get fed. Well, a closed hand don't get fed either. Second Corinthians nine and seven, a cheerful giver. Let me ask, tell you something, guys. The reason why I never come on here and say, oh, God said, so $100, so this. I don't know the people that do that. Maybe God did tell them a, a, a amount. God don't do me like that. When you sow, you sow your heart's desire. And the reason is, and I'm talking about monetary now. And the reason is because God wants you to give it cheerfully. He don't want your heart to be, you know what I'm saying, sad or angry um, that you're giving or because I told you to give or because the pastor told you to stand in a $50 line, a $100, you don't really got to. $50 and you sow it. If you sow $5 and you sow it with a cheerful heart, um, that is a blessing. Proverbs eleven twenty five. a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. A lot of you go to churches and you won't even give an offering. Let me tell you something because people are too worried about what the pastor is doing with the money. That is between the pastor and God if he misuse um, the, the blessing that God has gave. That has nothing to do with you. If God tell you to sow, you sow. So you don't miss what God has for you. Um, Proverbs 3.27 Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. If it's in your power to give a hungry person a sandwich, do it. If it's in your power to sow to a ministry, do it. Don't withhold it. These are the scriptures of the Lord. And some of you want to be blessed and you don't give. And I'm not only talking monetary. You don't give a smile. You don't give a good morning. You don't give a hug. You're not approachable. You don't give to your ministry. You come on, y'all watch several YouTube videos and people are steady pouring out and you won't even give a dollar. That We pour out, guys. Psalm 37, 21. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Here we go, talking about God people. We cannot beat God's giving. You know what I'm saying? Stop thinking that because you go to a ministry or you watch someone YouTube video, I'm not even talking about mine, and you're being fed. Bless them. Bless them. And I'm going to go into that too. Um... God gave me this scenario. And this this is for me too. I am a giver though, guys. I give. I believe in giving. I give my time. I sow monetary. I, 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 I just give. I give clothes. I feed. Like, and this is no bragging thing, but I love to give. And my bills are paid. Where some people 
um, had to come down in COVID. I had to come up in COVID. You know what I'm saying? So don't think that when you sow, when God tell you to sow, and you don't sow to that person because you don't like that person or you just feel like, oh, I ain't sowing. You not offending that person. You're being disobedient to what God told you to do for whatever reason, for whatever blessing God has for you. So God gave me this scenario, right? And some of you are givers on here, but I'm talking to the ones that struggle in giving in any form or way. Then you wonder why you're struggling, right? So you People know you cook big meals on Sundays, right? Just because your kids are grown, you cook. People call you. You cook, you cook. Yeah, I cook. Come by and get a plate. Come by and get a plate. Now, mind you, every Sunday you cooking. Everybody is coming over, getting full. Thank you. Telling you how good it was. Thank you so much. Oh my God, that was the best steak I ever had. Yo, don't nobody fry chicken like you. That was the best macaroni and cheese. And every Sunday you cook somebody coming over and they're eating and their bellies are getting full and they go back home to their food and, and, and you done poured out and you done gave and they eating and they leave and all they say is thank you. Nobody bought no ice nobody go you know what here go twenty dollars here go something but everybody every sunday when you cooking keep coming over eating all your food and because you're not saying well dang y'all y'all need to leave something they take advantage of that it's the same thing with the ministers of god y'all don't know the warfare that i encounter before giving this word and after giving the word, the warfare. But this is something God compelled me to do. I'm just telling you guys, God got some good stuff for you. Stop being stingy with the gift. Stop being disobedient with what God tell you to sow. If he say sow 50 cent, sow it. God never say nothing for nothing. He's telling you for a reason. And again, I'm not only talking about me. I'm talking about other YouTube videos you watch. Your church home. Um, some of you work. God told you to bless a co-worker because she looked like or he looked like they're not struggling. you like, I ain't giving them that. They come in here, this, this, and that. But you don't know what they going through. If God told you to sow and what to sow, sow. Because you sowing doesn't only come back monetary. I'm telling you what I know. Some of you got doctor visits that you don't know what's wrong. And God is telling you to sow into somebody in life. When you go to the doctor, that report is clear. You guys understand what I'm saying? Giving is a gift. Everybody does not have the gift of giving. Let me tell you one thing that I know, even about the narcissist that I dealt with. Um, He followed the principles. This man would give without question. I don't, I mean, give abundantly. And guess what? He got abundant. And yes, he's a whole narcissist, but he got abundance because he give, he give. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you on here have to realign yourself and stop being disobedient to what God said and go look up some scriptures because giving and sowing and reaping is Bible based. You reap what you sow. If you reap, if you sow in gossip, you reap in gossip. If you sow monetary, you reap in monetary. If you sow in anger, you reap in anger. If you sow in lust, you reap in lust. And on and on. You guys understand what I'm saying? Okay, so let's get into what I wanted to tell you guys. Right? So I wrote this scripture down. And a lot of times. I hear people always saying, um, the narcissist don't hear me. They twist the words. Absolutely. That's the spirit of Leviathan, right? And what the, the spirit of Leviathan, and I said this before, I'm just reiterating it again. The, the spirit of Leviathan, one of the things that he does is he twists your words. So you could go, um, 
just say, I'm just paraphrasing, just say you say good morning. Um, by the time it get out to the narcissist, it sound like you said, um, you don't look good this morning. So y'all get the logist. So your words come out your mouth and by the time it get to the other person, it's twisted. And that's with anything. This is why before conversation and, and before my sessions, I always ask God to clear the way, clear the atmosphere and open the ears. You know what I'm saying? So John 8, 43 and 44 says, why don't you understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. We know God's word is right and true. So in dealing with the narcissist, let me tell you something. It's not going to matter what you say until you blew in the face. They are not going to understand you. They're not. They can't hear. But I came on to tell you some of the demonic spirits that the narcissist deal with, which causes us to go through the mental anguish because we came into covenant with these spirits. Now, mind you, each one of these spirits carry other demons. So this is just some spirits, but this is the demonic spirit that carry, these demonic demons carry other underlying spirits, okay? So, um, lying, the spirit of lies, they're deceivers, sexual immortal, lustful, sorcery, divination, anger and rage. Now, mind you, these are the demons they carry. Each one of these demons carry underlying demons, right? Anger and rage, depression, pride, envy, jealousy. They bear false witness, the python spirit, the boa constricting spirit. This is why it feels like the narcissist is squeezing the life out of us. Suicide spirit, pedophilia, incest, hopelessness, manipulation, sorrowful, empath, incubus and succubus spirit, spirit of torment. Then we wonder why we, our mind was so jacked up messing with these walking corpse that was carrying these demonic spirits. Get this, guys. I just found this out. Remember when I said before, God would never leave us in the dark. He's never going to leave us in the dark about his truth. And I'm coming on here to repent because I did not know. When I called us empaths, that is a new age phrase and it's demonic, baby. We are not empaths. We are men and women of the most high God, the creator of heaven and earth, Yahshua HaMashiach. I'm telling you, when I sing this, it blew my mind like, oh my God, I got to go back and, and apologize. So guys, I need you to renounce that you are an empath. You are not an empath. And we renounce that word and that demon in the name of Jesus. I was watching this young lady who was heavy into witchcraft. And now she's serving Christ. And when I say she is revealing the things of darkness that no one would have known unless you was in that. And one of the words that she said that is connected to the kingdom of darkness is empath. We are not empaths. I repented. Forgive me for giving you that word unknowingly, but now we are correcting it. We are not empaths. We are men and women of God who is standing for righteousness. That's who we are. I told you, Satan comes subtle. Any make things appear to be innocent, that is not. 
And he going to come little. He going to come little. But it, in our spirit, and in, in, in our, my co-worker coming. Hey, hey. Good morning. Have a wonderful day. Um, In our spirit, it sings little until it gets in our spirit. And then we become discombobulated. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He told me to just say this too. The spirit of pharmacia. The narcissists carry this spirit. For some of you, the narcissists may not display some of this, but some of these demons, if you come into covenant with, will display in you. Spirit of pharmacia, alcohol, drugs. Um, some of you started drinking more, dealing with the narcissist. Some of you started smoking more, dealing with the narcissist. It, it was to the point. This was the only way that you felt like you could function in dealing with the narcissist by drinking and smoking and some of um, sniffing and an and injection, the spirit of pharmacia. You, you get what I'm saying? Each one of these demons carry other legions of demons. Because they never just going to work by themselves. It's always a strong man. So this is why, guys, we went through the low self-esteem, the depression, the anxiety. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The, the, the narcissists also carry the anxiety spirit. The world and the doctors call it a, a chemical imbalance. But the strong man to anxiety is fear. Y'all understand what I'm saying? They carry. And if you was already dealing with these things prior to dealing with the narcissist, when you deal with the narcissist, it just enhances it. This is why the Bible says for us to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is seeking whom he can devour. Satan ain't coming like, hey guys, it's me, Set, let me in, because I'm going to take your mind, I'm going to take your hope, I'm going to make you kill yourself, I'm going to make you depressed. Satan ain't coming like that. Satan coming like, hey beautiful, how are you today? Coming through the text, hey good morning beautiful. I can't wait to speak to you later. Let me tell you guys something else. The narcissist has a language. I have to click off, guys. But it's so much stuff because my video is going to cut off when I get to a certain um, thing. But the narcissist have a language. You guys and you women meeting people. Pray for discernment behind the person, words, deeds, and action. What do they mean by when they say this? Who cares if you they say you too deep? Who cares? Because Satan ain't stopping. He not. Until the day of judgment. Until him and his demons are cast into the lake of fire. They not stopping. So we have to be consistent with God. We have to be consistent in our prayer. We have to be consistent in fasting. We have to be consistent in praying. It's a never ending thing, guys, because Satan don't let up. He's consistent and he's a great influencer. Oh, baby, buddy, coming. I want to marry you. I think you're great. They, he coming with support. The reason why he texting you every day, because Satan is consistent. Be mindful. Pray. Let's no longer move in our flesh. Let's pray and seek the most high God. God is this you. I don't want nothing if it ain't from God. Nothing. Sorry. Nothing. That relationship almost cost me my life from being disobedient. It almost cost me my mind. 
I was sitting in the park in front of the, the tree and Satan was going, go ahead, put your foot on the pedal and just crash. Then he going to love you. No, we not. Because if you die, where do you think you're going to go? Guys, let's seek God for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation, and interpretation. Because we win. And I want the promises of God. And I'm going to get the promises of God. And not because I'm perfect. But because I'm striving to be set apart. Yes. My heart wants to do right. I'm not malicious. I love you guys. Remember, today is a good day to have a great day. G.W.Deliver2020 at gmail.com. Um, pray for me as I am praying for you guys. Keep commenting. Keep sharing. Thank you again to everyone that has sown into the ministry. I thank you so much. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed weekend.